Previously on the Dimension Door Podcast, Season 1. One summer's day, a wounded man gets drugged into the town of Haldren by the married couple Marge and Norm Gunderson, two retired rat folk who were previously in search of their original home where they were raised. They take him to the nearby healers where local wise woman Vasilisa Morozova helps tend to his wounds and discover signs of frostbite and cold exposure. Word travels fast in Haldren, and soon to arrive is Valdine, a mercenary who just so happened to be in the area. The wounded man's name is Yulm. He soon comes to consciousness and reveals his caravan was attacked by bandits and cold-dwelling monsters after encountering a snowstorm. The caravan was transporting Lady Argentine Malacene, a noblewoman traveling between the two largest cities nearby. Lady Argentine was seen being drugged into the nearby forest, and Yuln began to limp his way along the road, trying to reach the town for help. Vasilisa points out that it is the Centennial in Arison, a land far to the north, where every 100 years the current queen is replaced by her successor, whom the greatest of all witches Baba Yaga chooses. With the fear that Baba Yaga could be invading, or maybe even the kidnapped noblewoman and maybe the next forcibly chosen queen, Heldren's head of town council, Iona Teppen, asks for aid from the four individuals before her. The wise woman, the mercenary, and the two retired rat folk. They are to go to the forest, rescue the noble, and stop the cold if possible. Before leaving, our newly formed party goes to Vasilisa's home where she performs a horror reading. Looking to the cards for guidance and premonitions of the future, she binds their fates together, granting each a special token, which will hopefully draw luck in its holder's favor. The group packs up Vasilisa's donkey Marigold and Marge's pet giant weasel ghost. Journeying south, they soon come across the wrecked caravan, covered in snow with an icy wind blowing through. The forest that lays behind it is also blanketed in winter weather, and a clear path is found where it looks as though someone has been drugged against their will. Following the trail proves to be challenging. Traps, creatures, and bone chilling cold. The party leader finds Bannitz has taken over the High Sentinel Lodge, an old guard post and hunting outpost near the center of the woods. Here they begin their siege on the lodge, only to find that when they begin to slay the bandits, frozen skeletons rise in their place. With the immediate threats cleared up, the group searches the lodge, uncovering a trapdoor leading to where Lady Argenti is being held. They continue to search the lodge, eventually finding a sprite locked in a birdcage and half starved to death. The sprite tries to escape, but is swiftly captured and shoved in a jar for later. A knock on the door to the lodge startles the party. On the other side is another Lady Argenti with Heldren's woodcutter and Vasilisa's special friend, Joseph, leaning heavily on her. This is the real Lady Argenti. The one the party found locked up was a decoy who assumes the identity of the noble woman for various occasions. When the caravan was attacked, Lady Argenti fled into the woods before coming across the injured Joseph. The group learns that there is a portal that has opened in the woods, which is allowing the weather and the creatures to invade from Mirison, the land of eternal winter thousands of miles to the north. Lady Argenti, her double, and Joseph head back to town while our heroes head further into the forest, using the captured sprite, Rix, to lead them directly to the portal. Upon arrival, they meet the Black Rider, one of the three heralds of Baba Yaga. He reveals that Baba Yaga has actually been captured by the current Queen of Irisan, Queen Alvana. Alvana has opened portals all over the planet and plans to conquer the soon-to-be-frozen world. Before dying, the rider performs a blood magic ritual, binding the party's fates to Baba Yaga. They receive the mantle of the Black Rider, a nice boost to their stats, and level up. However, they are now bound by fate to save the mother of all witches. With the portal secure, the party returns to the town of Heldren to stock up on supplies and say their goodbyes. After having a short rest, they return to the border wood, stopping to spend the night at the High Sentinel Lodge. During the night, the lodge is raided by Winter Fay, surprising the party in their sleep and bringing Norm Gunderson's journey to an end. 
After defeating the Fae, the party buries Norm and pushes forward. After entering the portal, the group finds themselves in Irisen, where they meet Kappa, a ratful woman who looks exactly like Marge's girlfriend from childhood, who also died in her arms. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I gotcha. I mean, it is hilarious. It is pretty funny. <laughs> However, when you love dies in your arms. This isn't the end of the doppelgangers, though. Kappa takes the party to the nearby town of Waldsby, which is a spooky mirror version of Heldren. The same frozen clock tower, the same statue in the center of town, and even a gnome with a blue pompadour who does woodworking. The gnome turns out to be the long-lost brother of the gnome of the same description in Heldren. The party also meets Bolka, a local dwarf cleric who helps the party escape from a group of town guards that ride into town. With some magic, distraction, and only a minimum amount of violence, the guards who are still alive leave town and head back to the tower, but not before capturing Marigold, the donkey, burning down Kappa's house and branding her a traitor to the crown. Marge Feldeen, Vasilisa Bulka Vrix, the sprite, and his cousin Hatch, the house spirit, Kappa, Kappa's children, and Arbogazer the gnome come together in Kappa's secret hideout in the woods, where they make their plan to infiltrate the Pale Tower in order to shut down the portal leading back to Taldor and Heldren. Our heroes, along with Rex and Hatch, head to the Pale Tower, hoping to close the portal and save Kappa's youngest child, Thora, who has been taken prisoner. Arbogazer sets off to the portal in order to join his brother on the non-frozen side of the portal, while Kappa stays in the hideout with her two children in order to keep them safe. Making their way to the tower, the group sneaks in at night, avoiding combat where they can, and jumping from floor to floor of the tower using magical keys, and allow them to step through giant ice mirrors at the top of the tower, they find a magic spinning globe of the planet and an angry goat who lets out a scream, alerting the tower's current guardian, Radosek Barvil. Witch apprentice to the region's white witch, battle ensues. Valdeen recognizes the face of Radosek as someone he might have known back in Taldor, but before he can be asked questions, he comes to a swift death in large part thanks to Ghost, the giant white weasel. The party searches the top floor, finding a dungeon guarded by a magical trap which curses Marge. The dungeon is empty, and the child known as Thora is nowhere to be found. Vasilisa identifies the magic of the big spinning globe to be the key to closing the portal, and what Heldron and Waldsby are physically linked through a magical ley line. Vasilisa is able to figure out and close the portal, however it leaves the party stranded in Irisen, unable to return to their homeland. With the first step to stopping Elvana and freeing Baba Yaga completed, the spirit of the Black Rider appears again, this time taking on the guise of the deceased Norm. By manipulating Vasilisa's horror cards, the spirit transfers the blood magic that tied Norm to freeing Baba Yaga over to Bulka. With the fourth member of the party now adorned with the mantle of the Black Rider and the step closer to saving the Mother of Witches, the magic surges as the spirit of Norm vanishes and the party levels up. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Wait, is that really what happened? I love that last part where the party levels up again. Yes. <laughs> We're level five. Woohoo! And I love how everyone Marge has ever loved besides her kids has <laughs> died yeah. in her arms. You might actually want to avoid reuniting with your kids in case they decide to <laughs> climb into your arms and die. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Not boy. good. No more hugs. No Poor more Marge. hugs. If any of our party's wounded, we'll just be lying on the ground and be like, just keep Marge away. We might die. <laughs> Don't let her embrace us. Don't in our let Marge hold me. And so we rejoin our party exactly where season one, book one left off at the top of the tower. Uh, the, the portal closed. The magic surges. The spirit of Norm Gunderson disappears. And we look around the room. Elizabeth, what's going on with Vasilisa? Well, Vasilisa Morozova is looking really tense right now. You can tell that this is all starting to really get to her. Her freckles on her cheeks are now kind of hidden by the reddened skin from being exposed to the cold of Arison and in this ice tower for so long. Her 
she's she's clearly uncomfortable with the magical illusion of the clothes that she's wearing with this drab irisen merchant garb and she just wants her bright warm colors to be free and out there again she's she's cold she's tense and right now specifically she is clutching this card and looking down at one of her haro cards and the one thing that she really inherited from her mom is her eyes so she's got these eyes that are the color of the ice of the tower around them this piercing blue and right now her eyes are just pinned to the card of the mountain man that once again her haro cards escaped over control and this card was chosen by bulka or chose bulka in some mutual way and she's just caught in this moment looking definitely frazzled definitely the worst for wear and cold and puzzled like it's so uncomfortable that her cards have once again done something of their own volition and Zach, how's Bulka reacting after all of this? What what's he looking like right now? So he always he always looks like a dwarf, even though he's a little bit thin and a little bit tall. But he looks more his expression is a little bit more gaunt now than usual. Like he's also always a little bit underfed. Um and but you see now his eyes look a little bit darker and a little bit more sunken, like, oh my god. And um yeah, his his beard is a little bit frazzled from the ring that he had from the the wedding that he did for uh, Kappa and her husband that he took out and was used and uh, is to become blood tied to these people and blood tied to this quest. So the ring is now in his hand, and his beard's frazzled and his eyes are sunken. His robe has goat blood on it. His mace has goat blood on it. Plus maybe a little like little piece of lettuce too. Um, from from hitting the lettuce baby. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. Piece of lettuce. Yeah, so he looks very frazzled, and if you were to try and do like a sense motive or read his face, like he's unsure. He went with it and rolled with it because it was like it seemed so important and intense, and he does have this feeling like he was destined for something, but this doesn't feel like what it was supposed to be. This feels so much darker than he had imagined his purpose would be. And then we look over at Marge, who just watched her husband appear, completely ignore her, and then vanish again. Amanda, what's Marge looking like? Her eyes are darting uh, between everybody in the room and where she last saw Norm. She doesn't understand what happened and why there was no communication between them. That, that was her norm. Um, she's a, a sturdy rat woman. And you can tell she's strong with, with her armor and her shield and her sword. She's obviously strong, but she has a look of frailty about her. In her face, you can see the pain of, well, being cursed and of losing her husband and the reminder of another loved one that she's lost before. Her sword is stained red and blue. And she smells faintly of blueberries. That's Hatch's (laughs) fault. You remember that's Hatch's fault, (laughs) exactly. The blue sword. blueberries, right? But she's uh, standing next to this large, giant, white weasel that's got blood all over its face. It looks menacing, I'm sure to anybody else who, who's looking at it, I'm sure Bulka might be a little taken aback as well. Um, seeing what Ghost has done. And she was cute when I met her. Exactly. <laughs> so just this, this, this strong duo of Ghost and Marge, but yet there's this, this feeling of frailty and of maybe a little fear, but also anger. And there's just a lot you can read in her face and in the way she's carrying her, her body. Uh, on the back of Ghost. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we finally look over to Valdeen. David, what's going on with Valdeen? Valdeen's olive skin, gold eyes kind of stand out in contrast to the environment we're in. There's 
blue and white ice everywhere around us. And the normally maybe cool, calm, collected expression on Valdine's face is replaced with one that is switching between an a lack of understanding or confusion and back to a somewhat of a pained expression that kind of stares off and then shakes off and comes back to the present moment. He's clearly struggling between something current happening now and in the moment and something in his past that has come back to haunt him through the visage of Rattleshack, a face he never thought he would see again. Valdine's presence in the group he, he's been acting as a protector trying to uh, guide and lead with uh, as much leadership of strategy as he can uh, yet he is not um, a strong warrior he's more of a strategic fighter so he's had to learn a different kind of way of being in a group that is a mix like this of a rat folk now a dwarf and a witch that throws cards. <laughs> she's human too, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. she's human yeah. too. Yeah. That was really good. And here we are. Norm's spirit is poofed. And we've obviously hit a really high note. Everyone's leveled up. You close the portal. Everything's great. And absolutely everyone's lies right now. Um, <laughs> no, it, this is a depressing victory oh, is what this is. I know. We killed a goat. And we terrible. couldn't find <sighs> Thora and then Norm. We haven't and found then... Thora yet. Yeah. yeah. And you, here you guys Marge are. Marge is cursed. <laughs> um, uh, welcome to level five. <laughs> First of all, um, as was our last level up, this magical surge automatically grants you everything, hit points, blah, 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 class features, abilities, all of that kind of stuff. Um, And our good friend Bolka also got the mantle of the Black Rider, which boosts an ability score and everyone's happy and full. The only thing that you don't have is getting spells that you need to prepare. You have to do that at your regularly chosen spell time. So you guys are, you're, you're sitting in this ritual chamber. What do you guys want to do? I would what like, happens? What is what is the moment after Norm disappear look like? We saw the freeze frame. What happens next? Ooh. What are these around the walls? Are those benches or? So those are bookshelves, uh, little side tables. There is the area where the cauldron is in kind of a little corner. And you guys do see that uh, surrounding it are all sorts of like vials and tinctures and that kind of thing. But are there any uh, benches, chairs, seats? And sure. Like yes. That? I yeah. will say yes, there are. I'm going to go sit down. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> very fair, Bolka. Very, very fair. How long did it take to shut down the ritual? An One hour. hour. One hour. An hour. An hour. hour. And then after that, Norm okay. yeah, and appeared, after, right? yeah. And yeah. then so after that, Va- and that lasted maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. Va- Vasilisa is going to very carefully secure her Haro duck away. Keeps doing weird things by itself, and she doesn't really understand it or approve of it. So she's going to put it in its little pouch at her waist. And then... She's going to pull out her wand of mage armor and recast mage armor because it ran out at some point during her during ritual, ritual closing yeah. of the portal. Smart. So if Norm's ghost had attacked you, he would have had a good shot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, jeez. There goes the TPK I wanted to end the season oh, with, okay. but <laughs> forgot. Forgot. He worked for George R.R. R. Martin. So Bolka goes and walks over and he just sits down. You're looking gaunt. You're looking tired and probably a little bit overwhelmed. That's a fair way to put it. Like you can't, you can't see all his motives on his face or everything yeah. he's thinking, but you can see that much for sure. Yeah. Marge is still trying to make sense of Norm showing up to begin with. I think she was so consumed with the pang of grief again. So is Marge just frozen standing there? She she's thinking. Her mind is is racing. She's looking at just staring at the spot where she last saw Norm's ghost. It almost I think confirms for her that he's still around. Oof. It's good. I mean that fucking sucks, but it's good. 
Has, no one said anything yet, right? No one said shit. No. I, Bulka I, walked over to a bench. Vasilisa pulled out a wand and recast mage armor on herself. <laughs> and Marge, Marge is just, staring at the floor. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's We haven't tried to say a word. <laughs> no right. one has said anything. I think there is definitely an extremely tense silence. Mm-hmm. And like, especially because you guys are in a room made of solid ice. So you hear oh, Bulka's footsteps yeah. echoing through the chamber as he just walks over. I don't know. Does sits. ice echo? Oh yeah, iciness like oh, yeah. this. I've room? never been in an ice room. Yeah, it's echo. It's Does like it like being with snow. Crunch. If it's if it's ice, it's, it's almost ice. like walking on marble. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It might and even be making everything. that creaking sound that ice makes when it's like just oh, sitting oh, for it's like, that a, like a glacier. Like if you're, silence, yeah. so you can hear, you hear these the cracks and creaks the of the ice. Oh, that's creepy. Almost. Like so the since we're not talking, that's what we're hearing around us. Yeah. Yeah, especially since this big boom just mm-hmm. went off, like from yep. from the globe. So it's probably some settling still to do. Wow. Yeah. Well, do you think anybody heard that? I mean, do we need to get ready to defend our position, or and what the hell was Norm doing here? Oh, I, I, I'm sh- I'm sure I don't know. I, I I don't know. Was that actually was that actually Norm, Bas Lisa? Do you know what? What just I, happened? My best guess is it is some sort of spiritual manifestation of Norm passing along his role in our group in some way. Boka, you you doing okay over there, bud? Uh, I, I do not know. Boka, I know the guards have uh, somehow chosen you in some way. The mountain man made that clear. Later, when we are in less immediate, dire danger for our lives, I would like to sit you down and do a proper reading for us as a group so that we may uh, come to terms better. I think that we've been tied together in a magical way that I would like to explore with the Haro, if you do not mind. Please don't mind. I I would really much prefer if you did not mind. <laughs> yes, perhaps that 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 seems like very far off right now. Everything seems very far off from right now. We in a way we must uh, hurry. Veldin is not wrong. I think probably everybody knows we are here. How loud was the sound of the globe? And the turning off of the portal was that a loud noise or was it just magical dispersion? It wasn't. <clears throat> it wasn't as loud as it was bright, and you guys definitely felt a force, but I wouldn't say it was loud. But okay. it was like, you said the okay. building shook, though. Yes. Okay. So people would know it was by force, like as it dissipated, yeah. you yeah. guys felt like a, a wave of energy, felt something. Yes, and it kind of passed through you and hit. You. Oh yeah, and everybody's awake. It, yeah, yeah. It goes into the walls, <laughs> shook the whole thing. Oh, man. Bulka, Bulka. Yes. Uh, Herstig, she is still your charmed friend for a a few hours at least. Yes. We should take advantage of this. If if we get to her before the rest of the tower can get to her, perhaps we can even get her to fight on our side. Unlikely, but at the very least we should ask if she knows anything about Thora or something. And Vasilisa just kind of oh, yes. puts a little a hand down on Hatch. Oh, Hatch's yes. little we, head. We have to go get Thora. We you know, we can't we can't let another uh, red folk get hurt here. I, I think we have an opportunity to use her her stig, is that how you say yeah, that? I, I believe it's Herstig Herstig or we could we we may have an opportunity. Bulka, could you you think you could convince Herstig to lead a, a, a group of the tower's defenders that are here? I I saw the intruders leave. They went out this way and have have her take them out of the tower. Oh yeah. As we also depart, you know, Not with less idea. resistance. We could pretend like uh, Radusak, the infamous womanizer, yes. wanted to have the intercourse with me. And that you were helping him with that. And you could be like, oh, no, they have attacked Radusak and fled via flying away. <laughs> so you notice when you said take advantage before, like his, his brow furrowed a little bit. It seems like there should be a, a, a more 
honest way to do this? Uh, what do you mean? There has been a lot of, of dark things that I, I have seen today, and I do not want to add to it by by compiling more lies and trickery. I mm, I not, know this is all for, for greater good, but... You're not comfortable with deception? I mean, to a certain extent, in certain situations, yes, but this this feels like perhaps too much too much power? If, though, if we lie to Herstegorlov and get information that allows us to save Thora's yes, life... Yes, so that, that... That is worth the lie. Per- perhaps... I, I, it's very important to me to find Thora. If we were to return to Hersteg, and I would have to wake her up, I suppose, I would like to ask her and see if she knows anything about, about Thora, ask her about the Ratfolk girl, and then if she has information... I would like to go follow up on it, and perhaps I could leave one of you as my trusted friend to convey all of the falsehoods that we need to convey upon her. Perhaps she will trust you as she trusts me. Do I get a do do players? Do we get a sense? Um, I guess as characters, do we get a sense of what's going on with Bolkar? Are you? Do you visibly seem? I mean, I know you described it earlier, but do you seem more troubled? Or are you like? Are you, like, frowning a lot? What, what, what oh, you, as what this is, progresses. I mean, compared to how you know him before, which is just telling jokes constantly and yeah. and smiling. And even before the Mandragora fight, still, like, cracking jokes and still trying to have fun. Like, yeah, that's, like, it's just gone. Yeah, I don't know if you can really tell how long it's been gone, though. Telling okay, but I guess I guess really what I'm in. motivated by is how do we know what's going on with you? I, I kind of asked, I asked, Valdine asked what was going on with you. Oh, sorry, that was not David. No, Valdine asked you, like... Mm-hmm. Earlier, what was going on, and if you were okay, and you David, didn't really David, more yeah. southern, more southern. Okay, <laughs> hey, Balka, what's going on? There you go. <laughs> oh Jesus, that's the quality air content people hey. are here for. Uh, <laughs> Balka, you seem really troubled by what's going on right now. Can you, we don't have much time, but are you with us? What's going on? He just looks at the ring, and which is still in his hand. I. Yes, it, it certainly seems so. You probably are feeling a little bit different than you have ever felt before. Maybe more powerful in some strange way. We have all been there. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. I he probably that. is feeling that, Wolf, what is this inside me that's changed feeling? I think we all feel that a little bit. Are you conflicted by different motivations like i know you serve a higher purpose is that and now you have another purpose you must serve it i'm certain you feel that is that what troubles you i i I think i have a lot to consider i don't mean to rush you but we got some stuff to deal with here the whole tower is probably awake so i think you could get up and join us and we can get a plan and get get on (laughs) i mean you're sitting down, at and I'm worried. The, yeah, at oh, the very we go. least, okay, okay, we okay, should okay. go and search everything for Thora. I there, think. Yeah, and there's there's one other place. I mean, I, I guess she could be being kept. Where's that? Where 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 is that? Where, where, where is she? Well, I mean, there's there's the pixie room. Sorry. Fuck. <laughs> Sprite. 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 I mean, there's there's the Sprite room. <laughs> Are you sorry? Did you say season two? <laughs> Woo! Did you say the sprite room? Yeah, it's it's the the room with, with the the sprite and the atomy housing. Oh, there is there. Yeah, why would they keep Thora there? I mean, it's next to the air. I mean, she's a child. Child things like flying things. Maybe they were guarding her, keeping her company. Oh, that is true. Radosek seemed like maybe he wouldn't want the company of a ratfolk girl child. Yeah. So Uh. maybe he was like, hey, Faye, look after her. Okay. Well, well, we should go then. It's it's worth worth looking into anyway. That's back in the airy with all the birds. It was in the other room. Um, I, mean, I, I thought she'd be a pair. Yeah, storage you area enough. you mentioned. Yeah, 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 that storage area. I mean, we kind of rushed through there before because uh, we wanted to get <gasps> to the top and kill the guy. But now that that's not here, I mean, like, 
And I mean, if we could go back down, I could show you guys where I used to live. And, you know, maybe if you wanted me to come along, we could bring my house. You have a house? Yeah. Rex wants to come with us? It's pretty. Hey, I, I mean, look. If you guys wanted me to, I could. I'm just shocked you want to go with Marge us. Marge narrows her eyes. And uh, Rex. Va- Vasilisa leans really. over towards Marge because she sees the narrowing of the eyes and she says, Softly, you know, he's probably less dangerous if we keep an eye on him than if he's just flying around knowing so much about us. He'd be a lot less dangerous if he were dead. Okay, you could always <laughs> maybe have Ghost eat him later if he does something bad. But he's he's been kind of helpful recently. D- does anyone else hear it? Hear what you guys are saying? I mean, you're just whispering to each other. I would like to make us. You guys can do a perception. Look, check here's the thing. Can I? Yeah, can I yeah, perception versus whispering? the stealth? Yeah, yeah. yeah, our message spell ran out yeah. because yeah. it's been long. So, so roll me so stealth or whisper. Stealth and anyone whispered. who wants to hear them, roll perception. Well, I don't hear anything. I'm paying attention to Vrix. <laughs> <laughs> 23. Oh. 21. 17. So, yeah, Volka hears. Yeah. Does Vrix okay. hear? No, he doesn't. Yeah, Vrix and I are still talking. That's what matters. Oh, That's what matters. <laughs> Bulka, Does Bulka do react? Disapprove? Dude. <laughs> Bulka's been shutting down more, like, more and more. Bulka <laughs> is sensory overload right now. <laughs> like, okay, so meta-wise, like, I'm still going to play this this in-game. He's, he's closing off. But I'll tell you guys, like, maybe it started with the, the leader of blood drinking. But, <laughs> but, then, but then once Marge was cursed and dropped, you guys immediately looted the room. You blew right past her when she went down. And it was so counterintuitive to him that he really is second-guessing, like... Well, am I sure these are the right people? Are we the baddies? Like he's got a <laughs> a bad case we of that will. right now. The thing with and then looking over at Ghost and Ghost's mouth, like you said, it's like, yeah. Probably and now they're just looking, and yeah. now there's a party member and they're like, oh, we can just eat him later. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm in with the wrong people and I just signed like a permanent contract. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't. You, you signed your name and then it turns out you made a deal with the devil. <laughs> he feels alone. He feels You're like he's feeling like, got a no little bit to. of the yeah, because you part don't know. These oath. people before their hardships hit. If you were there at the beginning, you would have loved Marge and totally understood where she was coming from right now. And but because you've met Marge in her anger phase mostly. So while all of this is going on, Hatch is going to go over and jump up and sit down next to Bolka and just like reach over and put his little tiny hand on your hand. Aww. And just sit there and just kind of like look up at you. Valdine starts pacing back and forth on the other side of the room. I'm not happy with us standing up here just <laughs> waiting <laughs> for feelings. Let's come on. No, no, I mean, yeah. If you guys don't want me along, that's, that's fine. No, I got, I got, no, it's fine. Look, you know, Virks, we should just get going. It's fine. We should check this sprite room anyway on our way out. But we must go talk to Herstig while she is still at least kind of a fake friend. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah. uh, hopefully get it's ahead of Tora. these things, you know? Yes. Yes. And yes. and Bolka stands up too. Like he he gets that Finding yeah, we do need to be going. Dora. He put his boon into wisdom. So he's feeling like he's he's, he's <laughs> able he's got another layer of a, being able to see this this big picture, maybe a little bit bigger, and yeah. it's not better. Yeah, it's like and, <laughs> so, so it's like all right, so here's Welcome here's, to Wisdom. Here's Bolka and, and his metaphor for wisdom, all right. So like he's looking at a tree and he's like, Oh, that's a nice tree. And he's like, Oh wait, no, this tree's infested and it's dying. He zooms out a little bit more, he's like, Oh, Oh, the whole forest is infested. And he zooms out <laughs> a little bit more with his new bonus. He's like, oh, oh, the whole forest is infested. And also it's surrounded by a raging wildfire. <laughs> Crap, what did I get and myself I just, into? And I just bought property. <laughs> I just bought property. Oh, <laughs> man. Like, that's how, yeah. That's man. how he feels. Yep. So, yeah, but he'll stand up. I mean, he still wants to find Thor. And it's also nice to have one good thing that you can that he can actually focus on. Like, yeah. here's a good. Yeah, here's Hatch. Here's a good. With you holding hands. And, yeah, Hatch is good. And I know that Hatch is, like, literally good. And so that is. Hatch is a sweetie. It is yeah. comforting. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's outward. You can't see it. But inside, he is comforted yeah. a little bit by that. So, no, we're sure that uh, Thor is nowhere up here, right? I mean, we've checked We have all looked the rooms. quite thoroughly. Oh, me, I, I it, yes. Everything. Well, then we, so should, we should go. Let's go back yes. and deal with Herstig and then go from there and double check the area yes, again. Yes. Let By us. 
Let's go. Are we all ready? Are we take a deep breath? Marge, I wish there was more I could do. You know, I'll just stay on the back of Ghost. I- I'm still feeling strong. I just I just don't know if I could take very many hits. Give at me all. give me till tomorrow. I am feeling as though I could probably figure out a spell that would help tomorrow. Oh, I sure hope so. If if we need to, I'll I'll take point. I think I can at least get us out of here safely. Well, like I said, I'm I'm still strong, and I've still got Ghost, and Ghost is still strong. So you know, we can we can still take the front. But if I get hit too many times, I I won't be able to, to stay up front anymore. I'll be right behind you then. Well, let, right. well let's go then. Let's let's, yes, let's go. go. Yes. Okay. Yes, we should we should go. We we don't want to waste too much time. You're right. Okay, cool. You guys head on over to the uh, big sheets of ice that are the magical teleporters, and you hold up one of the many magical keys, and you teleport back down to the level with the dining hall that leads with a red carpet. Uh, You got those two hot, sexy, naked lady ice sculptures on either side, all posed and and looking badass and neat. Uh, And this is the level that you guys uh, saw Hairstick on, and you know where her bedroom is. Maybe we deal with Hairstick first, and then we do a loop of this floor before we check the area. Or, Valdin, you're the strategic person. What do you think? I, I think that's a fine plan, but okay. I, I really think we need to get Hairstick to yes. lead as many people out of this tower as we can. So I that have to We're agree. not facing the full force of this. I'm, I'm, i got to assume this place is awake at this point. Uh, yes. Bulka. Yes. Uh, do you want to maybe go in front because you're the person Hairstick is magically friendly with? Yes, she should. She should see me first for yes. uh, safety's sake. Here, let me, uh, you, uh hatch, hatch. Yeah, you right? made March mm-hmm. smell like blueberries earlier. Can you make you smell like blueberries? Yeah. No. Oh, oh, oh. You smell That's like not bad. Now. But uh, could you clean the blood and stuff off of us, maybe? Oh, uh, clean up, perhaps, yeah. uh, Bulka a little, mm-hmm. make him look more oh, presentable. Clean up style. Ghost too. Yeah. yeah. Ghost is looking yes. a mess. Oh, yeah. Oh, Just yeah. a little uh, magic and, would be. And so Hatch, this uh, wonderful, extremely short, hairy man with only uh, a nose, two arms, and two legs sticking out from what I describe as a koosh ball uh, <laughs> yeah. of thick kind of brown hair, goes around and you see him making hand signs and he casts Prestidigitation and cleans everybody up. Nice. Okay. <sighs> so much better. All right, Bulka. It smells yes. like blueberries. I, I'm, okay. Be, I can be do this. strong. We believe in you and and stuff. Oh my. It's very convincing. Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here, let me. Uh, I'm more convincing with my cards, and I hold my Haro deck in one hand, and I cast guidance on Bulka. Woo-hoo! Like, it's okay. I believe in you. Vara is with us. Go. Plus so one on a... my next roll. Nice. Let's let's do this. <laughs> okay. Mechanics. You know, normally this would be his thing. Like that's this is what he does and is good at. It's just kind of like schmoozing people and charming people. But he's really having trouble summoning it. Like, mm-hmm. like you know, when you like, okay, I have to perform now. I, this is not. I don't want to. Yeah. <sighs> You're like shook right now, aren't you? Oh yeah. 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 It's been like exponentially. Like each thing that shakes him, it's a little bit more because he was already shook. It just keeps piling on. Okay. Uh, and he's just going to gently rap on the door and be mm-hmm. like, good morning, gorgeous. Are you still in there? No response. Does the door Is the door locked? No. I'm going to open it just like slightly. Okay, you open it slightly. And kind of like tiptoe and be like, hashtag. hashtag good the morning. bed is empty. Good morning. Oh, shit balls. <laughs> uh, so he just deflates. Okay. Vasilisa doesn't even have to translate to that scald for everyone yep. else. It carries over quite well. Uh, I picked uh, up that word. Yeah, so, don't you guys, so you guys both know scald, right? We we know more language now than we did before we leveled up, yes. Because you're still playing it like you don't know. And well, it's a- we're, we can pick up words here and there now, yeah. And I yeah, feel I like think our understanding gotcha. will get better as time For goes on. For role play purposes. For role play purposes, it's not like, oh, yeah. I'm you can't hit a switch. It doesn't, language, that's kind of what yeah. we were, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what we talked about before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is not here. Ugh. All right, well, let, let's, let's continue with the plan well, then. Speed okay. is important now, you know. Yep. Quick first, and Vasilisa casts a fresh message on us. Let's stay in touch a little bit easier, just in case we get split up somehow. Good idea. Let's go to the Eerie. 
Uh, so you guys move slightly past Hairstig's room and you head into the next ice portal, which leads to the area, the place where you guys found uh, the cleric, um, killed her in her sleep, and none of the birds attacked you. All the birds are just like there and you can see they're kind of, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, <clears throat> there are no birds there. Um, let's start that <gasps> over. Uh, there are no more birds oh, there. Um, yeah, yeah, they so, all left. When, yeah, you guys yeah. pop in. The birds are gone from the wires that hang around this room between the different posts, normally where they would be roosting. You guys see some feathers on the floor, and you can feel the cold wind coming in from the turrets that perforate the far wall uh, of this crescent-shaped room. I don't know which is worth having all of the ravens here, or that they are gog now. Uh, is the sylph still in her room? Check for the body. Marge. Oh, okay. Vrix, and, uh, Vrix, where'd you say you wanted to show us? Oh, here? yeah, it's right over here. And Vrix flies over and he heads uh, to the east uh, instead of going to the west like Marge does when she goes to check the body. And he just flies through a little hole at the top of a door that looks like it leads to a closet. Marge will open the door to the west to check on the body of the sylph that she ran through. I'm following Vrix and I open the door that he flew above. So you throw the door to this new kind of unit closet area that you guys haven't seen before, and you see a bunch of different crates in this very triangular looking storage room, and then on some high shelves are a number of intricate looking dollhouses. Aww. <laughs> dollhouses? Dollhouses. Oh, I love it. And you see a, a little glowing orb in one of them. V- Rix? Yeah. You, and he are, opens the door and he comes out and he's wearing a, a little robe, like a little house robe and little slippers. <laughs> well, thanks for coming by. Yeah, that's a nice house you have there. Thanks. I had to, I, I traded a lot of shit for this house. It's, it's one of the nicer houses, I think. I did some gambling and some backstabbing, but I got the nicest one here, I think. So that's uh. the one you want us to take with us then, the one you're in now. Yes. Veldin, you are quite tall. Do you want to grab that and maybe we'll f- we'll just strap the dollhouse to Ghost? Can we put this in the bag of holding? <gasps> I just put the magic bag over it and like... Oh, hell yeah! Sides. M- move out of the way, Briggs. All right, all right. Take this with us. Okay. Is there anything else in this room of value, Briggs, that you think might help us? Um, let me... Check. You know, you know, Jira and Lask, they, they had a room in here too. They were kind of residents, so they probably had a lot of shit. Hold on. Uh, and he goes over into one of the other houses uh, and he's looking around. He's like, oh shit. Oh my. Holy shit. Okay, Wait, hold Thora? on. And then you, <laughs> yeah, you see. Like, Did you, find Thora? you see the dollhouse <laughs> sitting on the high shelf kind of. And it moves closer and closer to the edge until it just falls off and it goes and it hits and it clatters and smashes on the floor. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, Marge. It is just Rick's being quite loud. Thor is not in here, though. And a small spattering of treasure explodes out of it. <gasps> including a jeweled silver dagger with a hilt resembling the head of a blue-eyed winter wolf, a uh, jade bracelet in the shape of a sovereign dragon. You see two porcelain dolls that miraculously haven't broken, a silver medallion (laughs) decorated with sapphires, a gold signet ring, and three blue quartz crystals. I'd scoop up everything and throw it in the bag of holding. Meanwhile, uh, Hatch is going through boxes. And... Here, Hatch, let me help a little bit, and I'll just cast Detect Magic and see if anything else in the room is magical. I thought, I thought there's no magic. Thor might, yeah, no, well, Thor but might be up here, right? Maybe there's a spell was... keeping Thor, uh, you know, smart, smart. Did you detect magical anything? bindings. Did you detect anything? Did I? No. No, oh. I did not. Thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting dialogue. <laughs> Oh, yes, it was. Marge, what is going on with you? I don't know yet. <laughs> There's a body. So they're going through stuff. There's a she's just laying on the ground. Yeah, dead body. body. Blood. Well, there's nothing new over here. Uh, yeah, we should just get going. Okay. All right. Where Sounds where else could good. Thora be? There's all the other rooms and maybe even something important in here. Sticks room. Well, yeah, we, right. we gotta go back. Let's and go back the other... and look at that floor together. All right, the let's go. Hall, yes. Okay. 
So you guys Wait had... a second. One moment. What? I would like to peer over the edge <gasps> out into the snowy beyond. You oh, do does it. this overlook the courtyard? Do I see mm-hmm. where the birds went? Do I see if there's activity down below? Um, looking down, you see the courtyard is a little bit active. You see people just kind of like looking around and like shrugging and talking to one another and kind of like pointing around and everything. You don't see any birds. There are no birds within your field of vision. Okay, I can't see any birds. I say kind of under my breath because message spell. Mm. But there are some guards milling about in the courtyard. They probably felt something, but they don't seem to know what is going on yet. Let's hurry. Okay. Do they seem alerted? Do they run about or are they just there? They're just kind of milling about, like they're maybe wondering what is going on. Well, situation might not be as dire as I thought, but let's keep going. Well, yeah, before they come up. Right. Yeah. You right. guys leave the area and you head back to that sort of second floor gathering area. You come on uh, just to the west of Herstig's room. Well, we should go to the other side. There, we should. There, there's, there, we've not been over there yet. Good point, yes. Uh, first, let me check. I would like to uh, detect magic in Herstig's room. You detect magic in Herstig's room. Okay, there's something magical in here. Just one moment. And I would like to hunt down the magical thing or things. 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 You look through, like, her dresser, which there is a potion inside of there. And then you open up her footlocker, and inside you find three potions, as well as some shinies. Do you want to collect the shinies? Vildin, there's some shinies in here. Yeah, are they magical? I already had the bag holding the open. Are there are some magical. non-magical shinies, and I dump them into the bag he has yep. ready for me. Okay. And then I would like to try to identify these potions. Okay. T- 12. 12. No, give me another one. 18. Uh, three of the potions are potions of Featherfall. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only three. Only three. Only three. <clears throat> Is anyone here much better at not dying from falling than everyone else? Rix maybe? raises his hand. <laughs> Other than Rex and perhaps also Hatch. Well, I've never tried to not get hurt while falling before. So, you know, what does that... What, what? Okay, you know what? Look, I have a scroll of levitate that I just remembered I have. So, I I give a potion of feather fall to Valdine, one to Bolka, and one to Marge. If you think you have to jump off of the tower to escape for some reason, drink this potion first. Also, Bolka, what is this other potion? I... I am frazzled. I don't know. You, you go to give the potion to Bolka, and you uh, you see his halo is back. He's, he has a, a golden halo floating over his head. Oh, my what? Bolka. Looking shiny, Arby. Uh But uh, yes. you still need maybe this potion. Uh, okay. I can. If you want to look at I this can potion, help. I'd appreciate it. This would be a uh, spellcraft. This would be 11. No good. No good. You guys have no idea. All right. All right. All right, let's go around for our audience. Uh, there's three small circular rooms attached around the exterior of the large, mostly circular floor Just of this on, level of the tower. Hanging on like little nodes. Yeah. So, Hair Stigs was one. <laughs> there's those ridiculous giant mirrors through which you can be spied on in all of these rooms. Mm-hmm. So, we did Hair Stigs. And I think we're going around to the next of those two, three. Might as well finish those little rooms first. Okay, cool. You guys ready for this one? This is a fun one. Okay. There's nothing in there. Who opens the door? Do you knock? Do you check for traps? Do you check to see if it's locked? Do you knock? Vasilisa does not open it, and she leaves the rest of those answers up to everyone else. Nice. Good. (laughs) Nice. Hold. hold, Let's listen. Let's listen real quick, see if we hear anything. Give me perception. 17. Oh, yeah. 18. 23. Um, 27. You always. Wowza. Over 20, so that's Bulka and Valdine. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. guys smell something really uh, fragrant, really nice, kind of elegant. Flowers, perfume. Very flowery, okay. kind of perfumey. Yeah, it could be one of those two coming from the other side of this door. It's not bacon. Not bacon, no. Mm. All right, so next room. It's not bacon. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> you smell that? It smells good in here. Smell. 
Like, like flowers or something. What do you think it could be? Could, maybe it's just a really nice incense. I like a good incense. Uh, Hatch, do you know what might be in here? Or could be a girl. Does it you smell know? like oh, incense? Oh, look, maybe. Okay, it let's could. just, let's check. Yeah. It's not incense, but it could be a scented candle. Look, we Is don't know. Let's look. Marge opens the door. Marge opens the door. If it opens. <laughs> it does. Okay. It opens. It is unlocked. Uh, inside, you find a small bedroom. Um, looking around, it seems pretty nice, actually. There's a good carpet. Um, it smells super, super fragrant. And your eyes soon fall on why. Because over in one of the corners, you see a vanity mirror set up. And on the table in front of it, a variety of perfumes as well as a chair. Uh, over on a changing screen, um, you guys see several drawers dresses hanging from it and the style of Taldor. Oh, <gasps> what is going on? So there's a Taldor girl here. You also see a large mirror hanging between two windows and a pretty nice bed. But the hmm. <sighs> things just get stranger and stranger. Let's if you want to do a quick look for anything else that might be a clue, I shall try to detect magic again. I'll do a quick look around. All right. Just a quick check of the room, see if I see anything okay. important or valuable. You know, like Book a diary that explains uh, well, who lives here. <laughs> Valdine's going to Valdine, so. Treasure. Valdine's going to Valdine. Valdine, give me, give me a quick cursory check. That's a perception check, right? 20, yeah. 29. 29. <laughs> uh, you find a couple different books. One of them is kind of a learn how to speak Taldane Common book. Got a, got a couple books. A couple books over here. I'll throw them in the bag. Somebody from ears and trying to look like somebody from Talbot? They, I, they were they, planning to evade specifically with a person. They were planning to infiltrate. Yes, In, yes, this, yes, that well, is like a, the word spy, I was searching for. I need one of these books of how to learn Taldane, apparently. Yeah, like, my goodness. Couldn't hurt. And that's it. That's all you find. <laughs> okay. Anything no magic? magical? No things are in here that are magic. No things. Next room. I will, instead of just opening the door, I will perception. See if I hear anything. 23. I had to count my fingers. I also rolled a 23. Oh. Uh, 25. Ooh. Eight. <laughs> I beat Valdine. You guys don't hear anything. You don't smell anything either. Mm -hmm. I think Vasilisa is trying to put together the last room. <laughs> Vasilisa uh, is distracted in her perception check because she has quietly pocketed one of the perfumes that smells nicest. Aww. Nice. Uh, so Marge will look at Valdine and kind of shake her head like, no, like she didn't hear anything. And then... Yeah, let's go in. She opens the door. So opening the door to this one, you guys find a bed, desk, and a storage locker. Vasilisa detects magic. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to detect magic. You do not detect any magic. There's nothing magical in here. Still no Thora. Okay, well, okay. We, should, we should go to the, uh, the, the, the door across the hall. All yes, right. let's go. Okay. okay, you go to that one. Perception. 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 Six. 17. 13. 30. I rolled a nat 20. Nice. You don't hear anything. Okay. Marge opens the door if it opens. Yeah, it does. You open the doors and you find a uh, library. Floor to ceiling bookshelves lining the walls. A really nice kind of big study table. There's a back room with even more storage shelves. Um, and there are also two floor to ceiling mirrors in here. <gasps> I'm starting to really hate all these mirrors. Just saying. If there's no one in here, we should just keep going. Let me do a quick scan. Uh, detect magic. No magic. Well, okay, let's go. Yes. The question is, do we go down to the next floor? It opens up to the... Well, I think we still I mean, have... There's like a, a pointy part sticking out of the other side. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's through. Oh, let's double right. check the kitchen. Maybe Hairstig got snacky. Well, Freaks, what's the fastest way to get to the uh, the kitchen? You go through the dining hall. Oh, yeah, let's right go. Well, let's outside. do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. Cool. Do we see the bodies of the Atomy still there? No, they were eaten oh, by ghosts. Oh, God. <laughs> That's right. They're gone. <laughs> oh, yes. We should not expect any remains. That is correct. Uh, you guys open the door into the dining hall. Remember that the table is still sprawled with the remnants of food from the feast mm -hmm. of the night before. Mm -hmm. uh, and there you see uh, Herstig Orlov uh, in kind of her 
pajamas and she's just like kind of like sitting on the table like across from the other mirrors and she's just like snacking and like you hear her chatting and you kind of turn that corner and looking down you see uh, sitting on the opposite side of the table also sitting there snacking is a woman with kind of long red hair and really sharp facial features. And you're looking at- Really sharp like a rat folk? No. (laughs) You're looking (sighs) at who three of you would instantly recognize as Lady Argenti. Wait, what? (gasps) It is a third Lady Argenti. Vasilisa exclaims before she can control herself. And they both of them look over at you like mid mid crunch on a on a snack. Oh hello my friend, welcome back. Oh hello. Did you feel that? We had an earthquake or something? That is yes. why I was coming to see if you knew what happened. Oh it was quite it was quite bad. Uh, have you all have you all all met our uh, our good friend Lady Argenti? And I don't need to roll a bluff check. No, I have never seen this person before. Oh, she is wonderful. She is uh, she, wonderful, wonderful. How do you know her? Uh, she works for us. Oh, good. Yes. V- Vasilis is currently covering her mouth with her hands because she can't believe she, she spoke like that. Like, especially because she did it in Taldane too. She's just like, oh, I don't know what to say. She looks full on uh, shocked. You, you also speak Taldane, says Lady Argenti over to you. I I have been studying it for some time. It is quite the interesting language. It is, isn't it? I would even say that your accent is much better than mine. Thank you. You know, it's a very important part of my job. I would believe that. What is your job? Well, I am going to be... The Lady Argenti. Oh my! And she so does you're like a not, little flourish. You're not Lady Argenti then. You are new Lady Argenti. Yes, for, for all intents and purposes, I am Lady Argenti. I mean, I've been studying for weeks and I, they said that they have her now. So I think I'm going to be going over pretty soon. I must say from what I have studied of Teldor... Very good resemblance to a Tealdane. Yes, you know, we, we've had a lot of research and things like that, so yeah. it, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. you appreciate my work. For no. clarification purposes, what language is this? Talden. It, yeah, because she's practicing her Talden. Yeah. yeah. Totally makes sense. It's so nice to finally meet someone here who speaks Talden. Why do you know Talden? Well, you know, I am a merchant. Oh, so it, that's a very useful skill to have. Indeed, so many people speak Talden instead of the much greater languages of Irisin. So, have you ever been to Taldor, like around the Opara area at all? You know, I personally have not, but I think my bodyguard here uh, he has maybe even been in Taldor. I don't know for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I, I've been to Opara before. Oh, yeah. wonderful. I, I hear that's where I'm going to be spending a lot of my time. Uh, I can oh. imagine you probably will. What's it like? It's a big city. Yep. I hear it's not cold there. Not at all. Oh, man. I am so excited to experience like that for the first time. I hear you guys have this thing called rain. <gasps> yes, sometimes. It's like yep. snow, but not. It's, yeah. What? Not frozen water, <laughs> you know. And sometimes it is actually so warm that you feel even overly warm. And you take off your outer layers and just let the sun soak into your skin. Vasilisa is starting to drift off. Drift a little (laughs) bit into thinking about better, warmer times. I do not understand this conversation. Bulk is trying to get (laughs) Herstig's attention. What's what's going on, Bulk? I I want to... Like, I felt the shaking. I got up because it's probably some just stupid magic shit, but I just hanging out here, just telling God that's fine. If problem, Radisek will come down, he will tell me, and then we will go and fix things, but I, I figure it's just stupid magic shit. 
Oh, well, I came to see you because I, I, I was telling my friend here. She does not believe me. I was telling her that there is a rat folk uh, here in the tower somewhere. Because I, I heard there was one taken from uh, from Waldby that was here in the tower. And she does not believe me that there is another rat folk here. She's like, oh, no, that's not possible. But I tell her, yes, there is a rat folk. I mean, there, there used to be a rat folk person here. A small child. Yes, yes, like, that is the one I was... Yeah, yeah I mean, there, there used to be one here. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't long, though. He's, like, trying to ask, oh, what happened? But he doesn't want to ask what happened because um, he doesn't want to hear the answer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, so oh, so I guess I guess you're right. I, I guess there is no rat folk here. I, but still, it was, was here for a minute. Um... Okay, so where where is she now? <laughs> like he's tr- he's trying to keep up the performance, <laughs> oh, and it's no. just yeah. he, he so can't. Hard. He can't. Oh. I mean, it is, it's what happened with all children who make it over to the towers, you know. Now she is over in Taldor. I I do not. He's stunned, and then I, he's just like, I don't think I knew what? that. I apologize for breaking into your conversation, and uh, Vasily says now speaking scald. Uh, hair stick. Yes. Did you just say that they sent a rat folk child to Deldor? I mean, kind of, yeah. I kind guess of? in the way, yeah. I mean, I mean, so they they sacrifice her, they kill her, put her in doll, send her to Taldor. Oh. I hear they have a new hut over there to watch she over. She is a sentinel spirit. Okay. Yes. Oh, sh- see, there we go. That is, I do not always oh. know how to. I, I just assume most people know. You know, yes. when child disappears and they, oh, yep. they go to tower, they typically get turned into porcelain doll and sent to go you watch know, stuff. You know, we have been traveling. Uh, I personally have been traveling away from Eris and sealing things and stuff for so long that I, I almost forget. Yeah, of course, small child does something, gets sacrificed. Yep. You need them yes, you sentinels. Need, you need the soul you need and the, the doll to watch the, over oh, for the crown. Yeah, it it makes only sense. makes sense. Are yes. they in Skald speaking? Yeah. In yes. Skull. We You're pick picking up, like, up a here word and there. here and there. Yeah, I'm... Enough to know that Thora has been killed probably yeah, probably I, I am sure Marge you probably understood child death soul doll chicken hut yeah you know chicken hut <laughs> <laughs> I mean it is it is not oh, the- I, you know I, I think I've had quite enough of this place and she just picks up her sword and will actually just charge at Hirstag okay Holy! Except I don't know where they are. Uh, yes, and unfortunately, we're going to have to figure out where they are. Oh, no. Because as you charge her and we roll for uh, initiative, uh, the two ladies on the side are like, holy shit, what the fuck? And we're going <laughs> to enter our first combat of season two next time. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Come no. on! <laughs> we, oh, Marge is gonna kill everybody. Can we just keep playing? <laughs> oh. God. Thanks for listening to the Dimension Door podcast. Stay tuned for a promo from our friends over at Tabletop Titties. Now is a perfect time to hop into our show. If you have friends or family that might be interested in listening, but they are intimidated by the backlog, tell them to start here. The opening is meant to catch anyone up to the start of season two of the show. Also, make sure you check out our sister show, Severed Fate. We have officially launched our $10 Patreon tier. Signing up for this tier gets you access to our periodic table of content, which we will try to update every month, and features Zach's music orchestrations from the show, bloopers, and other downloadable fun. It also includes a personalized discount code for 20% off everything in our merch store. Thank you to our executive producers, Callie Rose and David Lester. Our editing and music is done by Zach Kreitler, and our bumper tracks are by MDK Music. Tabletop Titties is a new Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition actual play podcast run entirely by people of marginalized genders. Join me, Dungeon Master Charlene Bear, and my four chaos demons as they attempt to survive the Wild Well Trials in Tabletop Titties' first homebrew campaign. A fight to the death. A test of skills and ability. A conspiracy theory for rebellion in the making? But also, feel the pain of my fist. 
if you touch my cat. Darling, it just fits your style. Are you a paladin? <laughs> Cause I'm smitten. Don't follow me. I don't know what I'm doing. Tabletop Titties, available live on Twitch and wherever you get your podcasts. For more information, follow us on social media at Tabletop Titties or visit our website, www.tabletoptitties.com. That's Tabletop Titties with two Ds, if you know what I mean.